Hey, welcome back to another video. Today's video is on the dynamic topic of an electric pressure washer. And yes, I'm using my late night DJ voice, which I will not maintain. What I want to talk about is the Westinghouse. This is my latest and greatest toy. We've all been in isolation for about two months now because of this thing called a virus, a global pandemic, which is kind of redundant. I think pandemic means that it's global. I could be wrong, whatever. Point is, is I've been cooped up in my house. I've got this cool toy. This is my old toy, the SunJoy electric pressure washer. Now notice the sharp contrast in size. Does size matter? Well, sometimes it does. Often it does not. What do I mean by that? Let me clarify that for you. These two pieces of equipment called my electric pressure washers are identical in performance. Two specific categories, gallons per minute, PSI, which is pounds per square inch. What do those two terms even mean? Well, gallons per minute will define how much water each washer uses while you're working. Each is rated at 1.76 gallons per minute. That means the water that comes from your house is delivered into this machine and then comes out the wand is 1.76 gallons per minute. That's one of the unique features of an electro pressure washer or a pressure washer in general is that you're going to get some high velocity of water coming out the nozzle tip in exchange for volumes of water. What I mean by that is if you use your garden hose, you can attach a nozzle to it. Now you're only going to be able to get a certain amount of pressure or velocity out that nozzle. PSI out of my house is rated at about 70 PSI, which is pretty good for a house. Uh, I've been in neighborhoods where you're getting about 40 PSI, which is pretty weak. So I've got good pressure out of my house, but the problem is, is if I'm using my garden hose, I'm using a lot more volumes of water. I want to conserve water. So therefore I will default to a pressure washer. The second added value of that is velocity. I'm going to create a lot more velocity with one of these because what these machines do is they convert the traditional pressure from your house. They pressurize it with a motor. It speeds up the water it accelerates it and then it can concentrates it through a tip on the end of these wands and now you have high velocity water. So that's really the features of an electric pressure washer is you trade in one benefit that's marginal at best for a greater benefit which is less water consumption but higher velocity. So that could translate into you getting the job done quicker more efficiently, perhaps even more effectively, while simultaneously using less water. That is a win-win in my world. But let's get back to this. Now, I don't wanna do a direct comparison between these two, but once again, size, here we go, back to that proverbial, does size matter? Well, in this case, size does matter. And even though these are identical in performance, Look at the difference in size. This is a 19 pound unit. This, if I had to guess, weighs at least twice as much as that. But this is also almost twice as small as that. This is as compact as I've ever seen a pressure washer. Love, love, love it. And what I wanna do in this video specifically is address the features of this particular machine because it is filled with lots of features. And I will use occasionally uh, as a comparison, this, what I would call an outdated machine now. The obvious difference is that this has a cord reel. Now that seems pretty cool. It would to me if I was in viewer land and I had not used it, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. While it makes sense, it is useful, but for the added volume, or size that um, has to be engineered into it, I don't really consider a worthy trade-off. Now, if the hose, and this is a 15-foot hose, and I believe this is a 20 to 25-foot hose, so I got longer length there, 
and a lot of you will think, oh, well, I want longer length. I mean, who doesn't want more length? Well, sometimes that goes back into that size matters. Sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it just becomes cumbersome. Because this is so lightweight and compact, it's very easy to maneuver around. Let's talk about the features of this. Let me separate the components of it. First off, this is the easiest pressure washer I have ever assembled. It doesn't mean you're assembling the motor or engine or anything like that. It's just that it means that all these little handles uh, and receivers the wheels, everything snaps into place. I did not have to break out a single tool in order to assemble this. Everything snaps in place. Ultra compact. I cannot stress enough how the compactness, if that's even a word, is just so welcomed into my world and probably most people's world because you probably have a garage that's just filled with endless clutter. So it's really, really cool. Also, one of the things that people do not remember is this, that when you're washing something, cleaning something, it's work. So why would you want to make something more difficult than it already is? What do I mean by that? Let me tell you what I mean by that. If you, for example, have to pull out this behemoth in comparison to that, you're like, oh my gosh, do I really want to pull out my pressure washer today because A, it's already going to be work what I got to clean. Now I've got to deal with an oversized pressure washer. I got to wrestle with it. I got to lift it off a shelf, lift it up. My back hurts. I'm older. Fill in the blank. The point is, is you don't want to add to the problem of work that's already inherently filled with work called hosing down your car, your driveway, whatever it is you want to clean. So do not underestimate the value of compactness of that specifically. So let me pull this aside. We'll get back to the features of this. So the wand comes in two pieces. And let's see, we have the threaded end here. So this threads into this. Now this is cool because you just turn this little doodad and it threads, you hold the wand here and you tighten it here. Like I said, I needed zero tools. Yes, you can attach a wrench here and really clamp it down, but if you wanna store it so it's ultra compact, you're gonna to wanna to disassemble this each time. Just know that when I do this hand tight, based on my strength as an individual, it was sufficient. I had no leakage coming out of that when I used it. So that assembles very quickly there. Now let's turn this around. Here's the power cord. Like I said, it is 35 feet in length. While I'm on the power cord, let's address this little safety feature. It's called a GFCI. What does that stand for? Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. It's a safety feature, which means that if the circuit were to be overloaded or a change in flow, for lack of a better word, talk about a, a very rudimentary way to, to describe this, it's going to trip a fuse. It's going to trip a, a breaker. It's the same type of feature that you'll find in most houses that have been updated with current uh, code, which is when you're around water, and it's really it's just a way to prevent electrocution. So if you were somehow to get water into this, whatever, if you were a complete knucklehead somehow, this fuse would be tripped and the power would be shut off. So this is a great safety feature. Most electric pressure washers will have these. This is not unique to Westinghouse but they do in fact have it. It's got a little test button here, a little reset button. So for example, if something happened, whatever that may be, you, and it stops getting power to it, you simply reset it. Yes, you're gonna check to see what happened. Uh, maybe you have this attached to an extension cord and somehow water got in between this and where the extension cord was hooked up and it, and it blew and it tripped this. Well, you would just dry it out plug it back in, reset it, you're good to go. Back here, the tips. It comes with four tips. 
You've got a zero pressure, which is basically a straight line. I'll show that in another video. But what's cool is that these just snap right into here and pop out. Now I default to, I believe the green one, which to verify is a 25% fan pattern, which kind of looks like that. I know how's that for a description. Once again, another video. So green, go with this. Green like a stoplight. Green means go, red means stop. So I just default without having to look at it each time because it could be weeks or months in between the time that you use this. You're like, oh, I go with the green for all purpose cleaning, but it's got four variations, which brings me back to one of the things I was talking about, which is power. So yes, this has 2,030 pounds per square inch. So if I was to take the zero point nozzle, which is basically a straight stream, I could pretty much peel the skin off of my hand if I held it at point blank range. So that's how you can control power is A, you get a different tip, like the 25% fan. So that's going to now fan out, yes, pun intended, fan out that velocity and that pressure so it's not so concentrated into a single stream. Also, the closer you get to the object of which you're trying to clean, the more pressure is gonna be right out of the tip of that nozzle. So when you hold it back, it's going to reduce that concentration more and more and become safer and safer. So if you need more power, you simply go in closer and closer or you change your tip. But here they're conveniently stored for you until needed. This right here on the backside is where your garden hose attaches. Standard garden hose fitting. I don't know, I think it's like five eighths, who knows. So since we are doing a little bit of a comparison, the garden hose fitting on this absolutely sucks. It's the same, but for whatever reason, the um, female side of that, which is the inlet, it's kind of called the innie. This is the Audi, that's the innie. So the inlet, it would not screw in very well. This screws in very easily and it seats very nicely and it goes all the way in. Complete contact, complete consummation of the arrangement right there. So that's where the inlet feeds into the machine on the backside. This little handle here, this is where you can store the hose, or I'm sorry, this little, this little hook here. This is where you store the cord when it's not in use. So this is the backside. So let's bring it around to the front side. Now this is the hose. It's a braided nylon hose. This does not come with it. That's my own little contraption to keep this managed. Now, when you're undoing the hose, I recommend that you undo it completely so that you get all the winds out of it, which, how's that for a description, the winds? It matters not which end connects to which. They're identical, which is very, very cool because once again, you're eliminating effort. The ability to eliminate effort is once again a wanted thing because there's already gonna be plenty of effort in whatever it is that you're choosing to clean. So this goes into the front. Now, something to note is that there's a rubber O-ring that creates a nice white watertight seal to it. Ideally, what you wanna do is you'll notice how this drops down. You insert that into the receiver first Simply push it in, then you screw it in and you make it nice and snug and you're good to go. It's that simple. Now you take the wand, same deal. See how that drops down? You insert it into the receiver so that that O-ring gets pushed in there and then you simply tighten it down. You're good to go. Now you pick your chosen nozzle. Once again, green for go. This has a quick release. You pull this down, push this in, make sure that's fully engaged by slipping it back up. And now you're good to go. Also what this comes with is replacement O-rings for both the uh, ends of the hose. 
It also comes with this little metal, I don't know if it's even gonna show up on camera. It's a little uh, wire, for lack of a better description, because it is metal, it is wire, but that is to clean the tips if they ever get clogged. This does actually have a screen, a filter screen on the back side of it. I don't know what kind of chunks you're gonna get out of your water system at your house. I don't think I get any chunks, so it's really irrelevant. Something else I wanna illustrate is these cool wheels. They rotate 360 degrees. They also have locking mechanisms on it. So if you want this, let's say you're on flat ground and you wanna be able to push it and pull it around, you leave the wheels unlocked. But if you're on a subtle slope or a really um, sharp incline, you can lock all four of these wheels, not just two, like on some dollies or some rolling creepers, you can lock all four wheels. Uh, in fact, you could even lock one single wheel and kind of have this, um, let's do that. You could lock one wheel and actually have it rotate on a um, single axis point if you wanted to. So that's very cool. Something you probably have already picked up on is not only is it compact, low to the ground, which translates into a low center of gravity, which means that the weight, the bulk of the weight is way down here next to the ground. So the ability to tip this over is gonna be virtually impossible. That is a really, really cool feature. What I wanna illustrate is the versatility and the safety of a lower center of gravity. So for example, you could be working or have your machine on the grass but then you wanna roll it onto the driveway. So you will move this and position it in a different way. Some of you are gonna pick it up in moments and just move it like this. But some of you, you may be 20 feet away. You're gonna grab the hose and you're gonna do this. See that? See that? Very unlikely that any of you are gonna be that aggressive with your machine and moving it because you're gonna to have to juggle three different lines of attachment. You've got your braided hose, which is not currently connected to this, but just for giggles, let's go ahead and connect it. And one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000, done. It's connected. So you've got three cords. Now let me add this, that a lot of you will default to, for example, if you're trying to weigh the options between a gas powered pressure washer versus an electric powered pressure washer. You'll be like, oh, I don't wanna be attached to an electrical supply. Well, guess what? A, you're already attached to the inlet water supply. That ain't going away, even with a gas powered pressure washer. So you're gonna be attached to something. And by the way, in case you haven't picked up on this, this is way thicker, way heavier, because it's not only that naturally, but when you fill it with water, it becomes even more cumbersome and even heavier to manage. So you're already leashed to your water supply regardless. So having an electric cord, which is very lightweight and very easy to maneuver, to me is just a non-issue. And then you have this, of course, your hose, your outlet line that feeds into your wand. So here you have three attachment points, it's normal. But once again, is based on you and how you operate in your world, you might be 20 feet away from the moment, and then you're gonna yank on this and bring it onto the asphalt, the cement, whatever. The point I wanna illustrate is that it, I love it. It is just so user-friendly. And I would just have such a hard time to get this to tip over, even though I'm dragging over that big lip of the cement that meets the grass, or it's uh, rolling over some of the cord. It's just as, you know, handy and convenient as handy and convenient can get. So with that said, look for some future videos because I'm gonna dig into this a little deeper where I'm gonna show you some of my tricks and tips on how to get the most out of your pressure washer but I wanted to lay out the features for you. Uh, I'm just in love with it. Uh, you can always check the links below. It'll take you to my website where I deliberate in even greater detail 
of the nuances and some of my additional tips and tricks that you won't have to wait for the video to uh, read. Give me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I made a compelling argument compared to other types of pressure washers, specifically electric pressure washers. Let me know if I missed something uh, that you would, would have liked me to elaborate on. Give it a thumbs up. Like literally right now, if you learned even one thing, I want you to give it a thumbs up. So hover that mouse over, do it now. And with that said is I will see you on the next video. In the meantime, stay safe and stay healthy, my friend. We'll talk to you later.